Okay, hi uh, Robin, hi Raj, uh, thanks for joining the call. I just thought it was a good idea for us to catch up. Essentially, it's trying to get your feedback in terms of the questions we've received from the uh, guys on the ground, basically about the market stuff. What we've seen is very unprecedented and it's, it's causing quite a concern in terms of how we, we need to react or how do we need to advise people on the street. The recent issue being the oil prices. It has gone to negative. Some people are panicking. It's the end of the world. Perhaps a, a reflection in terms of supply and demand. Robin, care, care to, to give your views on this? So the first way, if you look back, it's the number of COVID cases. And that caused a sell-off earlier in February and March. But now, with the shutdown because of COVID, uh, the real economy is being impacted. So in the oil market, people are not going out to fill uh, their petrol tanks. People are not flying. So there's no demand for petrol. There's no demand for jet fuel kerosene. On the other hand, for the oil producers, there is a lot of supply. They're still supplying, right? For financial players, they don't have anywhere to store this oil. In the US, the onshore, there's no more storage. So as a financial player, you can't take delivery of this oil. You better sell. So that's what they did. They sold at any price and the negative price also they had to force to sell. But what we are going to see in this second wave is not just the oil prices. For instance, in Singapore, you may have seen reports of Hin Leong, one of the biggest commodity players, uh, one of the largest in Singapore. They are filing for bankruptcy. And then we are seeing a few other companies, Virgin Australia, also filing for bankruptcy. So these are the impacts coming through. As Robin mentioned, uh, uh, he's right. There's actually, there are two kinds of oil. One is the US oil and one is the Brent crude. US oil went negative because US oil is actually a physical delivery whereas bread food you can close out the forward contract so it was just a one-off thing where the contract expiry was happening last Wednesday and that's why they had to sell at a negative rate but if you look at after that the oil has bounced back actually if you look at the Brent and the WTI the US oil has bounced back almost 10 to 15 percent so we thought it was a very short-term blip and actually if you look at from next month uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and OPEC is going to curtail the uh, supply because they have agreed on that and actually it will start from next month. Plus, uh, US also is going to buy strategic oil reserve, China and India also are looking. We believe that oil has kind of bottomed out. Maybe the lowest is for US oil is between 10 to 20 and for Brent it will be maybe from 15 to 25. So I think the oil impact was more of a future contract and a leverage trading which people had to get out. How severe would be the second round impact because of this this vacuum in terms of economic activity, how do we brace for it? Second round is already happening. We have seen in some countries where the lockdown is extended. For example, in Singapore, the lockdown is extended till June. I think a lot of countries will extend the lockdown. The problem is the longer it extends the lockdown, uh, lockdown there will be more economic repercussions. Because everybody was hoping that by May middle it will start, you know, the opening of the economy. Even partially it will start. But the way it seems like, actually people want to just totally uh, eradicate uh, COVID. So some countries which have done very well in terms of uh, doing this is Hong Kong. Today they have zero cases, China, Korea, I think these three countries because they were very strict in enforcing the lockdown. But some countries uh, are actually still in lockdown. So we believe that different countries will have different repercussions. But in terms of the investors, I think uh, the central banks and the government are well ahead of the game because they have gone through the crisis in 2008. Uh, at least there will be some kind of medicine which will be out and maybe the vaccine will be there at the end of this year. So hopefully all this will create a second round impact slower than the first round of impact. That is what we believe in terms of the financial market. I think gold is a very key asset class which will do very well from a medium term perspective. The reason why we like gold is because there is a lot of fiscal stimulus across the world. So gold as an asset class will actually do very well over a medium term perspective. Uh, Robin, would you like to add anything? I think the impact, yes, in terms of the GDP is going to be very, very severe. The central banks and the governments have already acted in the global financial crisis. They only started acting towards a later part of the cycle. So the recession already started in 2007. Whereas in this COVID-19 crisis, even in March, they already acted. The US is pumping in more than 10% of GDP. The Malaysian government is coming up with a stimulus package of 15 or what, 17%, something like that. It's a great amount. The economic activity will go down, but 
it will be compensated by all these fiscal policies and they are giving out money in a way, money in people's pockets so that they go and go out uh, to spend to survive. After the COVID-19 is over, they still want businesses to be around. They want people to be able to survive until the crisis, COVID crisis is over and we want all the small businesses, big businesses to be still around after the virus has been beaten. In terms of the respective asset classes, perhaps uh, equities and also fixed income on an absolute return basis, what would be your advice? What would be the strategy going forward? Uh, when there is a economic crisis, asset prices will drop and we need to choose where it will be, uh, where, where there is value. At this point in time, we do like the fixed income space and some of the high yield bonds are quite cheap. Uh, even for the investment grade side, yes, some of the spreads are widened up because of the market correction. Of course, we need to be selective because as you mentioned, there is a prospect of economic uh, downturn and that will affect some companies' ability to repay debts. And we need to be selective to choose the right bonds that will not be downgraded or default. So that's for the fixed income. For equities, it was cheap actually, probably about two, three weeks ago. But because of the stimulus packages, it's actually rebounded a bit too fast. So for this moment, we think that there'll be a better opportunity maybe in the next uh, two, three months as the second wave hits the real economy and you know, uh, the earnings from companies get downgraded. In terms of gold, yes, I mean, as Raj pointed out, it's probably a good asset class. A lot of the governments there are very aggressive in monetary policy. Gold, as measured in US dollars, will probably go up. Okay, on the fixed income side, as Robin mentioned, actually we raised a lot of cash in the beginning of March, uh, 30 to 40 percent. The reason we started investing in fixed income. First of all, Fed buying corporate bonds. Second, ECB buying corporate bonds. And third, even the Asian Central Bank actually buying corporate bonds like Thailand is looking at it, India is looking at it. So these are the main reasons we became bullish on fixed income. Now, Fed also included high ETF into the bond market. And even ECB said that uh, uh, they will also buy fallen angels. Fed and ECB have to go down the credit curve. Otherwise, it will create a more panic in the market because this is not a financial crisis, it's an economic crisis. So the only way to avoid this is the central banks coming and actually helping the market. So that is one of the reasons we started turning bullish on fixed income. Actually, we are very bullish on high-grade bonds. We are having a barbell strategy. We are buying high-grade bonds, which are 10 and 30-year bonds. But for high-yield bonds, we are sticking to 2 and 3-year bonds. We don't want to take a lot of risk on the high side in terms of duration. Actually, a lot of companies will get hurt and they may not be able to refinance. So we prefer all the high-yield bonds, which are 2 to 3 years, whereas high-grade bonds, we don't mind buying 10 and 30-year bonds, triple B, single A, double A rated. So, for example, we like actually the TMT space in China in the high-grade bonds and we like Middle East also like Abu Dhabi, uh, Saudi Arabia in the high-grade space. For the high space, we prefer the Chinese property sector. Uh, actually, the Chinese property sector have done very, very well and there's onshore support. So, for high space, we like the bonds which they can raise money onshore. So we are buying high yield bonds which for the companies which can refinance in onshore market. For example, the 10-year treasury today is about 40 basis point, 0.4%. View is the 10-year treasury will remain in the range of 0.4 to 0.8. But if you look at the high-grade bonds, in terms of the credit space, they are all trading at 3%. So if the treasuries are going to remain at 0.4%, the 3% 3 looks very, very attractive for anything which is rated single A, double A. And the second thing, we believe that Fed will do kind of yield curve control for the next monetary meeting because they don't want also the treasury rates to go up too much. The 10 and 30 year treasury will remain in this range. So anytime it goes outside the range, they will start buying. Japan has done yield curve control. Australia also is looking at yield curve control. Otherwise, it will impact the credit market. So we will be very selective. But now I think they've reached fair value. So we are looking at some of the India and Indonesian high yield sector. Of course, the risk is much higher there. But the yield is also very high. So we'll be actively, tactically trading rather than buying and holding. So high yield bonds, we look for trading opportunity. But high grade bonds, we are okay to hold also because we believe there's a lot of value in terms of credit spread. In the beginning of March, the high grade bonds, especially the long dated, there was not much demand. The reason was actually the treasury was also very, very volatile. Gold was very volatile. But with central bank intervention, Fed intervention, and buying copper bonds and buying treasuries, actually that has calmed down the fear in treasuries. So now with treasury being very, very stable, people have started buying high-grade bonds because these companies are very, very good companies. So generally we have seen that with the treasury stabilizing, people are preferring high-grade bonds for the longer tenor, like 10-year, 30-year, 40-year bonds. Even Petronas, Malaysia, they did 5-year, 10-year, 
and 40 years all were oversubscribed and actually the 40 year bond was up almost about 12 dollars in the secondary market so there is lot of demand that despite the oil prices petrol has did very well from the start we we spoke about oil prices so the oil prices in terms of the dysfunctional prices was more about it was not the catalyst for the economic downturn the lockdown was right. however the economic inactivity due to the lockdowns is now being buffered by government actions central bank actions now it's at a level that is more rapid and at a higher magnitude as compared to other financial crises we spoke about uh, what asset classes to be in gold seems to be uh, a good asset class to be in uh, hard assets uh, very defensive as far as allocation into equities we're raising cash we're being nimble and defensive uh we're forecasting uh, earnings to be downgraded in the near future because of the economic inactivity as far as fixed income we're seeing a lot of value uh as more and more central bank support uh is coming into the market even into corporate bonds so we are positioning into high grades especially into long dated we're we're applying a barbell strategy equal measure on the long end also Uh, equal proportion on 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 the short end. That at the same time will be uh, very selective on high yield. So I guess that's a good chat for this afternoon. I will carry yeah. this conversation to our our colleagues and also investor base.